You click this because you want to know how the heck did Nintendo kill true 100% runs in Mario 3? What does Nintendo have to do with anything and why are they going around killing runs? Well, those are some great questions. The first thing I want to talk about is my experience and kind of the earliest date of 100% runs. Now, the earliest known 100% run that I sought out to beat that I had seen at the top of any kind of leaderboard at the time was on speeddemosarchive.com. On the Super Nintendo version of Mario 3, so it was the All-Stars, was done by someone named David Gibbons. His handle was Marshmallow or something like that. And that was the only run at the time that I had ever seen published. Now, I never searched YouTube or anything like that. That, for me, was the basic foundation of which 100% was built on. Essentially, me and the rest of the community in Speed Demos Archive and other speedrunners just kind of copied if we were going to play 100%. We were just going to copy what he did. But why did he do what he did. Ever since we were all kids, and I know a lot of you out there are, are thinking that, you know, when you played 100% of Mario 3, you did everything. We all did everything. Except we didn't. We didn't actually do everything in the game. And I bet some of you out there are like, no, no, I did everything in the game. And I'm gonna say, no, no, you actually didn't. And that's so weird because Nintendo actually designed a flaw in their game where you can't actually truly 100% run the game. Here's where it gets interesting. Normally in 100% runs, you do worlds one to eight, all the levels, all the hammer brothers, hand trap stages in world eight. You do the two piranha plant stages in world seven. You got to kill Bowser. You do the secret bro in world two and a bunch of the other little levels. Like one of the even more interesting things, sorry to get off topic, but if you were able to skip the Twisty Castle in World 5, it would still be 100% run. I know I've mentioned this in previous videos before, and I talk about this all the time because I find it fascinating, but you can actually skip that, and it wouldn't classify as you cheating or skipping a level in 100%. Unfortunately, it's impossible to actually skip it because it does take you into the cloud section, but it's just a glorified pipe transition. There's no boom boom, there's no end level card, nothing that exits the level except for a pipe transition. Transitions. So technically, you don't have to do it. Unless there was a 100% run out there, 100% all pipe transitions, that would be weird. Nobody wants to do that kind of run. But let's get back to what's important here. Let's get back to why all of us are liars and none of us actually truly 100% the game. So we have the basic foundation of what 100% is, the run that I was copying, but why don't we add the spade card games and the mushroom houses? That'd be a great idea. Why wouldn't we? Mario 3 doesn't actually have a specific percentage. It's not like it has a menu that says you've completed, you know, 50% or like in Super Mario World with 96 exit. There's no true definition of 100% in Mario 3, but naturally you would feel do everything in all the worlds, which is what we all thought we did, but we didn't. Here's the problem with Nintendo and how they stole true 100% runs from us. The mushroom houses and the spade card games are something that we all love to enter. We got the toad house, you know, welcome to my shop of strange and wonderful things. I don't know how I remember that. I played the game too much. I need to put it down. In world one, you can get all the levels in the hammer brothers in the mushroom house. In world two, you get a hammer, a music box, and a warp whistle. And in a 100% run, as you know, we have to destroy all the Hammer Brothers. So we do all the levels in World 2, we break the rock by using the hammer, we get the secret Hammer Brother. We can complete all of World 2. This is where it starts to get dicey in World 3. You fight all the levels and both the Hammer Brothers, you get a hammer and a star. Now we all know the special secret boat with the hammer, you break the rock, you use the boat, you go across, you got the spade card games, you got the mushroom houses, you drive around in the boat, it's all kind of fun. Right on, done. All right, so we completely cleared all of World 3. Here's where it gets messed up. You use the hammer you got from World 2 on the secret in World 2, so you don't have any hammers when you get to World 3. Then when you get to World 3, you do have a hammer, so you use a hammer to break the rock to get the other secrets. Now you have no hammers, you get to World 4, oopsie! The first thing you see when you enter World 4, you go in the pipe, you come out the other side, you get the 4-1, there's a mushroom house, and guess what? That mushroom house is behind a rock that you cannot break. You either have to pick one. You get the secret mushroom house in World 4 with the hammer, or you take a ride on the boat in World 3. Nintendo actually designed the game to be impossible to fully clear everything. You, you know, know and that, that really, really pisses, pisses me off. off because you want to get everything. Even when I was a kid, I was like, no, no, no. I got everything. I'm better than everyone else. You know, we all thought we were amazing Mario 3 players when we were kids. You get the tail, you flutter over everything. 
whatever. But to come to realize that we never actually completed the entire game, and not only did we not complete it, but it was impossible. We never could in the first place. I find that very interesting because if that was not the case, you can guarantee that 100% runs in Mario 3 even today would include every single Mushroom House and Spade card game. And I mean, this same thing applies for Spade card games. If you get the Mushroom House in World 4 with the hammer, you can't get all the Spade card games in the game because some of them are behind the rock and blah, 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 blah. Even when you enter World 3, the first thing you see on the bottom line of the map is that there's a rock, there's a Spade card game and a rock. You would still need a hammer, which means you'd still be down a hammer. So, and it only happens then when you get to World 5, everything's fine in World 5, you get to World 6, Everything's fine. You know, you don't need any more items. It's just the World 3, World 4 dilemma. I actually wish all Mushroom Houses, all Spade card games were in the 100% run. I think that would be really cool. You're never guaranteed the same items in Mushroom Houses, except for very specific Mushroom Houses in the game. Like the second Mushroom House in World 6 will always give you a hammer suit. Dope. But all the other Mushroom Houses, you have no idea what you're getting. So this would lead for the opportunity of like, oh man, I got a fire flower in the mushroom house in world three. That's amazing. Now you can do like a frog suit, right? You would get a frog suit in the world two mushroom house. You could use it on the fortress in world three. And then you'd be able to equip a fire flower right away if you got lucky. It would create a whole bunch of cool strats. But unfortunately, Nintendo stole a true 100% run from us. They didn't even know that they did, but they did. I would really, really like to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this whole thing. I, did you guys notice this? Did you guys ever wonder why we're not getting the Mushroom Houses? It's not just some silly rule we made up. It's legit impossible. If somebody could figure it out, that would be amazing. But I'm telling you, the only way is if we could duplicate items. And if we could duplicate items, Warpless would be dead. 100% probably would be dead because we would just duplicate clouds, especially for Warpless. 100% clouds wouldn't help you too much, but you know what I mean. And that brings us to today's video sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM is a company that will provide you with amazing deals on t-shirts, joggers, and even undies. Clicking my link in the description and using my code will offer you 10% off at checkout. That's not even everything. As soon as you get to the site, you're offered up to 20% off and even orders up to $85 come with free shipping. Into the AM is known for their insane art style ranging from animals, space, festival, and even Halloween. After all, it is the right time for Halloween. And if the shirts are too fancy for you, they have basic tees of black and white. For the the old plain Janes out there. The t-shirt club is also a brilliant idea for those of you who can't decide on anything. Sometimes too many options make it too hard to buy. And the t-shirt club sends you a brand new tee of your size every month with one of a kind on brand designs curated by their talented team of designers for just 15 bucks. That's 40% savings. The best part is how incredible the quality of the material used in the shirts. It feels so nice on your skin. Without a doubt, Into the AM shirts are my most used shirts overall. With that being said, click the link in the description for 10% off at checkout for any orders, and let's get back to the video. Yeah, so write down in the comments below what you think about this video and how you feel about um, being lied to this whole time. Not only that, but being a liar yourself. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope you guys try and get all the Mushroom Houses in one playthrough. Good luck. Never gonna happen. 100% will never change. Please like and subscribe, and yeah, see you guys later.